Good morning and welcome to uh, Thursday with Delenn. If Delenn is ever on time, you will never know it because that's just not my forte apparently. Um, I've just got a few more books and quills to finish up. So let's just get those out of the road before we head on to this one. Yeah, okay. Um, so that we head on to the walls because we've only got seven more and that's just going to help us get a move on. A um, little bit disorganized today. Just was scrambling to try and do some packing and stuff before I got online here, which means chat did not get cleared properly and so on and so forth. But that's okay. We are here. We are uh, going with it. And apparently my uh, camera, or not camera, light is in my face today. That's okay. All right. Where am I here? I had... There we go. So I'm going to throw seven more, this one that's full, okay. throw seven more um, notices in the box and then we can get out of here. So let's see what we've got. Looking for a few different messages. Let's see. So it, it seems kind of crazy when I do it this way, but I've got quotes that I'm enjoying putting in here and some of them are useful and some of them not so much, but they're a little bit of fluff that's a bit of fun. And the odd time I've changed a couple of pronouns, but nothing major on those changes. We've got, we're down to six. Let's see if we can find a good one. Hmm. Don't like that one. So I'm looking at a page called fortuneandframe.com and they had 688 fortunes that you could put in into say a locket or something for somebody as a gift. And I'm just narrowing that down a little bit, not going through all of them. There's a lot of them that are sort of motivational type stuff and mindfulness things. There's one that sounds like a fortune cookie thing. Puppy. blank. There's another one. So I'm not signing any of these because um, they're not mine. Oh. One thing. everybody. Hey Max, how are you doing? Move to new window. Just starting out a little chill today. Um, oh, hello we're going to few, few of the last, the last half dozen of the books to fill the, the whatever you can call it on the server while we're gone. Uh, so hey, fantastic Sherlock Fox. Hello. hello. Welcome B Silver B. Hello and welcome Max. Max Raid. Woo -hoo! Max knows how to read the Dell signs which means never be on time. <laughs> Actually, there's a book that's been living, well, a copy of it's been living in our, um, one of our rooms for, for oh goodness, multiple years, but nobody's actually read it. <laughs> um, but it's got a title that says, thanks for being late. And I started to think I should move the book because every time I see it just before streaming, I'm like, mm, not quite accurate. Okay, so what we're seeing on screen here is just I'm putting in the last couple of um, inspirational quote type things, and I was trying to find, um, yeah, I start, I um, was trying to find, um, some interesting ones to paste, and they're getting to be weirder and weirder. So, 
There we go. Three left, and then we'll stop seeing weird blank pauses in the screen while Dylan does stuff that you guys can't see because it just makes it easier than me popping up another screen back and forth. Um, let's see, actually, let's just, just let you see what I'm seeing. It's probably easier that way. So first off, where are we? Okay, good, we got that one. Display capture, all right. So you're seeing what I'm seeing. Um, and this is Fortune and Fame website. It's teeny tiny text, so that's part of what's taking so long. Ah. A lot of these were quotes, but some of these are just submitted by other people. Oops, come on. Space, there we go. Done. Now I'm number two. So Max, what was it you were working on today? You've read most of it. Well, Probably because cer certain extended family asks you questions about it. All right, what do we got? Okay. And most of these were quotes by other people, like famous people, but um, last few are just few motivational, random stuff. And we'll, we'll put in some more different ones when I get back, but I want to um, just make sure we've got this full before we leave. Brand new. There we go. I like this one. Okay, last one. Copy. Paste. The brand new ancient proverb, be warm inside even when the temperature outside is cold. I like that. Okay, done. Now is that the last one? I think that was it. Making sure I don't have any others that I hid somewhere. Nope, that's it. Okay. More gathering resources. Ugh. Uh, Max was doing more gathering of resources for the Pharma Farms and getting lost in Zipchus's Hotel California while looking for quartz in the nether. Yeah, I could see that. I could see that. You can check in, but you can never leave, right? Okay. Let's fill these in any randomness. It's empty. You're perfect. So I'm just going to head on up and stuff these in the box up top. I wanted to get a double chest up here, but um, not going to happen. Just too many other books fit in other places. So that means there's room for more, right? That should keep us for a while. Take that. So what I'm working on today is um, I'm making a mess whatever and then um we're gonna head back to base oh random junk i see okay i had more for books that's what that was um random stuff that needs to go elsewhere and then we can go back and work on the walls for the town i'm or our family is headed out to ireland today heading to dublin and i was very much unpacked as in not ready so um my brain went completely pear-shaped, I guess, and didn't necessarily want to do a whole lot that made any sense. So the result is, of course, then we end up with this sort of mess. Okay, that's that one. That's a project box. Toolbox. Goes there with this. It's redstone. I need to make that red at some point. Okay, I think we're good. Hit the bed and then we should be out of here. The Max says, I swear I was wandering lost for like 10 minutes because I got turned around in the tunnels where Zip was hunting for netherite. Yeah, it's not just Zip. There is quite a, quite a mess out there in the netherite lands on this server. Um, I know I'm contributing a whole bunch of that mess too. I actually had a, a sign that said like, or not a sign, a waypoint that said like netherite crossroads or something like that. I can't remember exactly what it was, but I actually had to mark a waypoint to, be able to figure out where the bottom of the tunnel was to be able to get back up to the surface to figure out how to get back to my base. And I still got lost. I guess I should check the mail while I'm here. 
probably nothing in the mailbox, but you know, if you don't check it, then you'll never know. Yep, nothing in the mailbox. Still stuff in Fox's mailbox though. Some random something or other, I don't know. Map or something he left there. Fantastic Shock Fox says, my own minds are similar, it's confusing. I use Journey Map every time I go down there. Yeah, actually, funny enough, I um, ditched Journey Map just recently. Um, trying, trying to go exclusively to Zeros because now they seem to have picked up the one feature that I really wanted a Journey Map. It's a little bit less polished, but it still works. And um, so it was just because I heard the Journey Map was a bit of a resource hog. So I was trying to lighten up a little bit and see if I could keep things a bit more stable around here by not, particularly not running both. Because, yeah. So then running both is kind of dumb. So the sounds in the nether are a bit weird today. Which is not good. Hello? Can I please double jump to deploy? Thank you. So last night I was up till three my time. Um, being dumb, but I was really, really, really wanting to take my Bedrock World with me on this vacation and have, still have access to the Java server. So I was fighting to get um, my alternate Prism launcher working, and that was just being a bit of a pain initially because, of course, it didn't have the, the C++ stuff that it needed. And then... Oh, wrong way. And then you add to that... Um, then it wanted Java. So I got Java. Then it turns out, nope, it wanted a different Java, so I had to get that installed. And I have two Javas on there, but that's okay, it'll be fine. Um, and so I got that part working, but I was fighting with the bedrock trying to get it on my iPad because it was being stupid. And at one point, actually, it removed all the worlds from my iPad, so I was quite annoyed by that. Is this not other stuff? Um, so yeah, I was quite annoyed with it all being moved. And or so removed and couldn't get it back on. It was taking forever to copy. So instead I gave up um, and tried to put it on the Microsoft Surface, which I did eventually get working. But truth be told, I got it working like five minutes before the, the last ditch effort um i'm just i'm trying to clean up stuff and i have a huge mess but after the last ditch effort copy trying to get things to work on the ipad and murphy's law of course then it suddenly worked you know that's how it always goes all right um yeah that'll be fine there okay so my inventory is kind of empty now which means I can grab the stuff I need. Ooh, hey, this has a box. I don't know where that goes. It goes over here. Um, I can now grab the stuff I need for working on the wall. Yeah, so we're, we're flying out this evening. Um, I don't normally stream on Thursday evenings anyways, so that's not going to be a, a problem. Um, but I will definitely not be able to go long. I often do on Thursdays. But I can't go long this time because I managed to sneak in a hair appointment for my daughter. Um, just because her bangs are getting in her face and, and she has not grown it out like I have. So it means that... Um, oops, I need to slip out right after this is over to get her to that appointment. Um, and then, yeah, then by... I think our... I think... Fantastic Shock Fox said our transportation from the house arrives at quarter after four. And we take off here at about um, approximately 8 o'clock our time. Okay, and I'll grab one stack of dirt just because. And this one, we have those. Alright, I think that's about as organized as this pile is letting me get. I take off, eh? So Canadian. Do, 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 do. Here's a weird did you know. In the city that supposedly spawned the Bob and Doug McKenzie thing for um, the hosers, uh, which were made famous on uh, SCTV, if you guys don't know what that is, look it up on the internet, because it was a 
an interesting program, a Canadian comedy program out of Toronto. Toronto. Yeah. Crazy Canadians. We say things weird. Um, but it was, I liked it quite a lot. Anyway, the, the city that, that spawned the hosers, um, is actually also, has also dedicated a park bench to them. So like, there's like a, a actual bus bench or park bench that has, um, statues of the two hosers sitting on it in celebration. I thought that was kind of cool. Maybe one of these days I'll be able to get Arch Thunder to go and grab me a picture because that's in his city. My brother who lives up there as well. It's just can't be bothered. Well, not can't be bothered. He's just too busy because he's got young kids. Thank heavens I'm not a hoser, but I do wear toques and eat pancakes. And I don't drink beer. Often. But there's some of the ones partially responsible for the A stereotype. We don't actually say A as much as the stereotype says we do. But I can't deny that we, the Canadians do say A at some point or another. But I, I was thinking that there's other, um, what do you call it? Other international groups that say things similarly. And uh, for example, one of the the memes that we that we eh, pardon me that uh, Fox and I were watching British kids looking at the other day was um, poking fun at, at Brits using in it, I N N I T or isn't it, and they stick it at the end of sentences. Things like it's a great day in it. Um, what? <laughs> Sorry, a distraction. I've got my family on um, the ability to get through the silencing on my phone during stream hours if something big comes up. And apparently, according to my daughter, she discovered that today is supposed to be Voldemort's birthday. I don't really know if I, how much I care about Voldemort's birthday. He's a bit of a pain in the neck. Has zero fashion sense and... Um, yeah, it's a bit crazy. That's okay. Yeah, so, Max, I could totally see you being in, interested in um, the Great White North stuff with the hosers. I could totally see that. That makes so much sense. There's a lot of, um, there's certain parts of the US where some of those stereotypes fit as well. But one of the other ones I, I used to, years ago I used to work for a camping company and um, in one of our provincial parks, and we would get asked all the time if we knew Mike from Canmore, which is which is another comedic character from a television show up here called Canadian Air Farce. And I just I get so used to those sorts of questions, like no, I don't know Mike from Canmore, and no, you cannot get Toronto to Toronto in one day. Let's see. Air, yes. Sounds like... <laughs> Max, sometimes I really do think that you're just a transplanted Albertan at times. And please uh, take that in the best way, man. Because <laughs> we can be a little bit of an annoying pain in the neck bunch sometimes. Wow. I know I use that phrase. That's a hoot. But... I haven't heard anyone outside of my uh, grandmother use that one in ages. So you're making me smile. You're totally making my day. Okay, one, two, three, one. These are gonna drop. Where was I headed? I'm headed over here, but I'm not making that angle all that fast. So, just trying to see what did I do? There, okay. Let's see where the other bend is. In here, how did I do this part? Ah! Try that again. There. Three, three, three. Huh. Apparently I just winged it.
Okay, guess we'll wing it again. Yeah, I'm at, sorry, I'm at the Abbey base on Java. Um, do, working with the wall because we have a lot of wall to do. So you've got the main castle here. And for those of you that do visit the site every once in a blue moon, there's not much to see yet, but I moved the portal so it's now inside the gate rather than inside um, the other bridge zone. And then the abbey is on the east side. And I'm staying away from the, from the abbey. Uh, it's full of librarians, but one, I wasn't done with them, and two, given the snapshot changes, I just want mentally want nothing to do with them right now. Just that that one annoyed me quite heavily. Um, so we have a lot of wall to do, and I figure since my head is really spacey around the prepping for the vacation, I would just work on extending the wall down a little further, and that will give us more opportunity so that I can work on these what you're sort of seeing here and there as red dots. These red dots are actually representing what's going to be the roads. So like a, a path blocked out part of this. Um, I haven't path blocked all the rest of it because I want to make sure the roads are laid out the way I like before I go and do that. And one of the keys to that, which is delaying the whole thing, is that understandably they've got a ring road right around by the walls. And I can't put the ring road in as reference points for the other road sections until I've got the wall in because it moves where the road is. Okay, that's a lot of boofera and blah blah blah. But we are close to where there used to be a village. I think I managed to finally successfully take it out. Um, but we were down in this neck of the woods. All in all, it's just another brick in the wall. I can actually move this one back. One. So going up and down is the challenge. And this is only six blocks high. There's actually going to be another four on top, but getting the first six, it really helps me with all of the heights involved. And I guess it's night, night time. Oh, about 10 game minutes left. All right. I'm gonna drop down by one in here. Let's see, brick, brick, it's gonna be Let's go three, but we'll do one, two, three. Stone, stone, brick. There we go. Now I can sleep. Alrighty. Just scroll up a couple of notes here because there's something I wanted to respond to and I can't remember exactly what how it was phrased. Oh! Um. Ah, oh, I see. I don't know why the question of the day was missing. That's really odd. Properties. Huh. It should be showing. Oh, I know why. Ha ha. I forgot to turn this one off. There we go. Now we see it. You were seeing my cheaty screen. So the little black box framed bit that you were seeing earlier. Um, I've got an app, a third party app, simply called Twitch Chat Overlay. And all it does is it's a an app where I can click bleh, where I can click through the text on screen to be able to continue playing, but it's sort of like my own version of text on top of everything else. Okay, so scrolling back here, we've got the, so we're related to the question of the day, which is, if you had the opportunity to be immortal, would you take it? Fantastic Sherlock Fox says, um, it depends. If everyone could be immortal, or at least have the choice, then I'd strongly consider it. If it was just me though, unlikely. I wouldn't want to live forever without the people I care about. True, 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 true. Makes sense. And Max had said something interesting, and now I can't remember. Hmm. Oh, yes, getting lost in the nether. Okay. I think we did address that. Perfect. Yeah, if everybody was going to be mortal, and you had... If, if mortal was the default, maybe that how's that? If a mortal was our default, and we had the choice to not be then I still don't know what I would do. 
but but Fox makes a very good point. I wouldn't want to be around without others, um, especially people I care about. Okay, so this is where I go down. But, uh, oof. oof. Yeah, I love my Canadian TV. It actually reminds me of one of the things I was going to do, and I'll probably try and see if I can set my devices to do so while I'm out, um, is I want to share some old stuff of some sort or other, some sort of old entertainment with our kids. So it might be, uh, I think it might be a documentary. I think it's most likely what I'm going to choose if I can get hold of it. Although it just occurred to me my easiest source for getting hold of it has actually recently dumped the content. Um, but I wanted to share some of that old stuff in it, and I was thinking they, they don't quite get slapstick. I've tried Carol Burnett. That was a bit of a fail. Didn't, didn't go over very well. Um, but maybe something like Hello? SCTV might. It's hard to say. Hey, Bob Reen, how are you doing? I'm looking forward to being in your neck of the woods fairly soon, but how was your work day for today? I'd love to be off at half past five. That would be fantastic. That is if I was working. Did I drop that one? Yes, I did. Okay, good. So, the other one. Let's try a new geek out while we're at it. We're probably going to get a, re a recycle. Or made for TV movies. I don't know if that's a recycle or not. I don't think I've seen that one. Only work the afternoon. Ooh, I'm sorry to hear that you were not feeling great. I hope that resolves itself fairly soon. It makes for an unpleasant time. And especially rough since I know you were off recently um, on vacay for, with the fam. And so that's rough feeling not well, trying to get back into the swing of things. Roots was definitely made for TV, yep. I mean, there's a lot of the, like, Hallmark specials. Those were definitely made for TV. And probably a good thing, too, <laughs> because they weren't, weren't very good most of the time. Um, I think there was one called November Christmas that was officially a made-for-TV movie, although... I've got it on DVD. It was gifted to me at some point. There's, um... Oh, what do you call it? Disney used to do all kinds of made-for-TV movies. And I can't think of a single one right now. I mean, Roots was more of a... I guess it was a movie, but I would have called it more of a series, honestly. But that's just me. trying to wing it as we go and it's, it's weird when the land's not quite straight anything with the Olsen twins how the west was fun yes that was definitely made for tv movie and wow that was a weird one i mentioned the how the west was fun before because um that's one that was made quite literally in my city and you could still tell because our, it's actually our uh, 7th Avenue, which is our light rail transit street. We actually, um, you can still see like there's light rail transit stuff going by and they didn't, and they didn't change it for the movie. So you can actually tell. And then there's art that's been out in front of one of our office towers. And that, that just, like, it's so recognizable in the movie. It's supposed to, it's supposed to be Dallas, Texas, but it's actually Calgary, Alberta, Canada. And you've got the Olsen twins um, post their full house days. You've got the Olsen twins riding together on a horse down the middle of 7th Avenue. It's kind of cheesy. That's true. That's true. Good point, Bob. 
So they become, in essence, made-for-TV movies, even though they weren't necessarily meant to be short. Or, um, what's the word? Meant to be not picked up. And the other thing is, pilots are often two hours, right? Whereas, um, so we're made for TV movies. There we go. But, yeah, pilots are often two hours. Where, and I always find that weird because if you want it to be a one hour series and then you're doing it as, as a two hour opener, while I get that you want a hook, sometimes two hours is a lot for people to sit through. And so you're not going to have as much luck with um, getting people to, to buy in to the to the story if you've only if you've got two hours to work with. Like it's sometimes it's a lot for people to sit through. I guess is where I'm going with that one. This one here. Possibly. Possibly. I'd never seen V, so maybe it would. I mean, what you could also probably include just about any of the cheesy sequels to the Land Before Time series, although those were mostly made for VHS. Which is, these days, just about the same thing. Okay. I've got a pattern going that's throwing me a little bit right now because it's it's just every third is bricks part way up. But um, I've also got a different pattern going where it's where often it's two rows of if three blocks and then one row of two. But I'm trying to figure out which is which. And then I've also got this thing going on here. So this one will be bricks, I think. One, two, and this three. And I'm only worrying about the way it looks from what's considered the outside of the wall, not the inside. Okay, so we want it to be three high, right? One, two, three, yep. So one, two, three. Acknowledging that it's shorter on this side. And there we go. And it's 332 for a reason, because that way it sticks out evenly, more or less. More or less is really what it comes down to. Also trying not to fall over the edge. At this stuff spot down here was a hole, like it was open, and I just covered it off flat. I really would like to fill it in, but at the moment I don't really feel like backing myself off a ledge. All right. So yeah, so V might count. Weirdly enough, actually one of the, um, not movies, but one of the TV series I was thinking about bringing, showing my kids is actually an oldie. Um, there's a series of, of these old things but um, it's called The Day the Universe Changed. And uh, it's by a guy named David Burke. And it's just, it's one of these science things, but it's, it's well, sort of science, science slash history slash nice connections. And that might be the other one. It's, it's another series by him. It's, it's called Connections. And uh, it's just, it's kind of a fun one where, where it's, talks a little bit about how one one possibility of how an idea led to another idea which led to a further idea and and on history goes I'm showing how things are often connected to, to each other but each episode um, yeah it's a, it's got a chain from new to old or vice versa so I'm thinking about that one as a possibility uh, what have we got from the front. It's one, two, come on, did this wrong. Okay, now I've got a block, perfect. And what's this one? One, two, this one will be brick. One, two, three. So you can see why um, doing a lot of this uh, offline would probably be A, good for mental health, and B, easier than doing it online because it's, it's hard to keep up the commentary and count at the same time, even though I'm only going to six. Yeah, I'm not even having going to Stormy's five. I don't know why, but Stormy can't count to five. However, apparently I can't count to six, so it's a good trade. 
Wait, one, two, three, four, five. I got it wrong again. This one. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, I guess it is five. Maybe? Maybe? Five or six? Plus ground. Yeah, okay, five plus ground. Got it. Good. Down there was one, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. See, it can count to six. Heck, there's one my mom was super into Richard Chamberlain where he played a priest, but I can't find it. Huh. The Geek Out has changed to two bands or performers with over eight albums. So yes, the Beatles definitely have more than eight albums. Aerosmith would probably count, yep. Um, Smashing Pumpkins would be another good one for that. And actually at this point, I don't remember, Enya's close, but not, not quite exceeded that one. I need coffee, but I left it sitting at water because um, I'm going to do water as well. This coffee doesn't hydrate. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Um, I was looking at the list of, of pumpkin albums after Joe... Um, Connor's Joe was telling me about uh, that she went to go see a concert of theirs recently. And there's a bunch that I actually don't even own. Let's see. Albums? Yeah, so they've got... Um, let's see. One, two... I'm just, this is just the 5x5 five five grid on Google. Now, I recognize they're also sort of counting some of the lar larger ones. We've got, let's see, five. I'll just, I'll just list off eight that might be familiar. So we've got Melancholy, Infinite Sadness, Siamese Dream, Gish, Adore, that's four. I'm trying to remember his other ones here. Uh, we missed some really neat ones. Apparently, Tea Garden by Kaleidoscope is, is pretty good. Um, your Euphoria is okay, it's not great. That's six. And 2001, they had a Rotten Album, Rotten Album, uh, Rotten Apples album. And that was in 2001, so that's seven albums. And then Pisces Iscariot from 94 was, that's eight right there. And then they've got random things like, um, Airplane Flies High is being, Google calls it an album, but it's really not because it's, um, a box set of extended extended uh, singles. So apparently they had seven, what is it here? Uh, Smashing Pumpkins said, uh, discography on Wikipedia. Uh, they had seven live albums and then 12 studio albums, it looks like. Yeah, that's not counting compilation albums. Hello. Okay, hey Ziptoos, good to see you. So on screen we have a geek out category. Geek Out is a game that we're playing. Um, this is the pop culture series. And um, it's actually a card game where where people will roll a, a category and then you don't get to choose, it's a dice. And then um, that dice color corresponds to the category. We've got um, music, television, literature, so written material, um, movies. I'm trying to remember, there's six altogether. Movies, TV, literature, music, oh, and miscellaneous, and then a roll again category, or, or choose your own adventure kind of thing. And so this one, um, we're currently sit, I've got it set to auto roll the category, and then it just pulls a random, uh, random line from a text file that where I've copied all the cards in by hand. So for that category, and this one currently says, Two bands slash performers with over eight albums. And Max got lost in your world. I was kind of amused to hear that because it's not something Max normally does. Getting lost is not one of... <laughs> Max is not quite as bad as CJRV Williams for getting lost. He doesn't necessarily have the um, sense of direction of a lost person. We got one... Two, three, four, five. Oh, that's too short. Okay. I need to go up on this one. This one. 
this row needs to go up. My two favorite bands have over eight. Which two are those? And we're also debating whether or not groups like the Beatles had more than eight. Um, I would say probably, but now that I think about it, I'm not sure if some of them actually count, because there was a period early on where they recorded and released, but really it was radio sessions where they were covering other people's stuff. So I don't really know if that counts. One, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. That's one, one, two, and this one is three. Two, three, three, two. Okay, that'll get me the curve I need. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're right, he does actually have, uh, J Michael Jackson did have well over eight albums. There was a time when my brother was into all of them, which Given what you see on screen, um, our body form does not allow us to actually do Michael Jackson impressions dance-wise all that well. Boy, did he try. And my, and my favorite silliest impression my brother would do of dancing, not well at all, but just sort of mocking and for fun, was um, he actually used to do a half-decent job of copying Christopher Walken's Weapon of Choice video, which I thought that was kind of funny. Aside from the stuff that were, that's physically impossible because you need cable wires, and um, I think there's a little bit of actual like gymnastics flip stuff, the rest of it he could actually do the whole thing, which is kind of amusing. Somehow, Zip, that does not surprise me that that would be your music style. You and I have had some pretty cool conversations over, over the years, or over the months, I guess. Wow, don't seem like I've been here that long. Um, but that does seem to fit, which is cool. You missed it a while ago. I um, wouldn't necessarily be your thing, but it was, I did slightly think of you a little bit when, um, I was talking a while back about one of my former coworkers who, um, I had the joy of having him introduce me to, um, heavy Christian screamo, which was one that I had never thought would ever exist as a genre. And, and then the reason I thought of you was not because of the religious aspect or anything silly like that. It was just simply, um, it was just simply going, you know, do I actually know anybody that listens to heavy music? Like, what am, an ex of mine used to, one, two, three, four, um, used to listen to hard rock that was harder than I was into, just I'm not a wall of sound type person. But I didn't I think I knew anybody that listened to anything sort of stronger, so to speak. But actually, then I remembered you do. So, yeah. That's really how it came into be. Um, Fox and I were listening the other day to a video about... I don't remember who it was. The guy we've been watching recently. Uh, what's his name? Rick... Beato, I think it is, on YouTube, and he's got some really interesting ideas about music. But um, it was just kind of interesting because sometimes I forget that some people are so very um, open to polygenre listening, I guess. I'm pretty narrow-minded, I'll be honest, when it comes to music, the music tastes. So yeah. The whole, I guess, so to me, a song has to be singable to be really music. However, let me correct that to say that, however, I have my hang ups, as Fox loves to call um, hang ups regarding things like um, regard, yeah, hang ups for things regarding um, so a wall of sound making it unsingable, or I don't, or I'm not a fan of rap. Um, I don't put extra letters on the name, so rap is still rap, but just not my thing. Um, a lot of, it's weird because it, I like a lot of sort of older, older slightly folkiesque styles, 
and show tunes and like 60s-esque oldies. But the caveat on that is that, um, I guess there really isn't much of a caveat. The, uh, pardon me, the caveat on that though is I'm not a fan of too much in the way of singy talky type of stuff. So rap would generally be out, uh, beat poetry type of stuff, build as music would be out. It's just me being a pain in the butt, really. Picky. There's no real logic or reason to rhyme for it. <laughs> Smort. I like that one. I don't know if that was a typo or not, but I like it. I, um, I had to ask the internet who Rick Beato was, because I had no thinking clue at all. And apparently, he's some sort of... Um, uni professor and music producer kind of guy who's apparently been a set artist as well in his past um owns a really sweet studio i kind of wish i had a studio like his and far too many guitars for his own health probably has to use headphones because given the number of uh really nice speakers and um subs and stuff he's got and just in the pictures he probably <laughs> doesn't hear as well as he used to um, that said, he's a really neat, neat kind of guy. I don't always agree with him, but he definitely knows his stuff. Yeah. I'm not as sold yet on the What Makes This Song Great series, um, only in that he definitely delves into a lot of music theory, which is fine. One, two, three, four, five. Um, fine, except that I'm very rusty with my music theory my music theory and stuff, and he, he'll break it into different things like Fantastic Sherlock Fox said, um, it was t something like, he was talking about a, what was it, an F major chord at nine, and I'm going, okay, I, I get this concept loosely, it, and Fox asked me what it was, and I said, um, suffice to say, it's a music concept that's sort of hard to explain, but you w it's one of those combinations you would think would not work but does, and I'm not sure how else to explain it better than that, you know? And he says, what? And I said, yeah, I know. And yet, one of the things that drives me nuts about him is just, I used to have piano teachers over the years that would actually put, like, quarters and stuff on the back of your hand, make sure that you're level, but then wanted you to have almost like an eagle bird claw on the front, not wrapping in, but rounded, to be able to play. I mean, I did conservatory music and stuff, so it was fussy but yet you watch Rick Beato and his hands are like almost flat like he's got arthritis or something I don't know but it that really weirds me out and yet on the other hand some of the stuff he does you wouldn't be able to reach the chords he's playing if it wasn't for that one two three four three there we go um this one yeah, he's a smart guy, but when he spends a whole lot of time on one song with that much detail, I get a little weirded out. Exactly. The ninth note of the key, which is not necessarily... Um, most people think that a scale has eight, and so to add a ninth confuses the heck out of people, and sometimes it depends on which ninth you add, as to whether or not it sounds harmonic or, or whether it sounds more like cats in the backyard. See? We need music theory conversations. We'll knock on your door or the dub's door. There's a few others we could as well. It is, yeah, exactly. It's the second note an octave higher. So if you were to play a C, a C, a C add nine, then you would end up with having two adjacent notes. And Max, you might find this mildly funny, unrelated to getting deep in music theory. Um, when I was doing the note blocks for the, uh, I don't know, trader cabinet thing in shopping district in this server. I was actually originally going to use the C scale because it's one of the ones that's all white keys, super simple, sounds really clear to a lot of people, you know, just about everybody can pick up on it. However, because the the actual series of note blocks starts on a G major scale, it started really bugging me trying to use the C major scale forced to start on G. So I ended up having to go back in and figure out where the, where the uh, Fs were and turn them into F-sharps. Did I just... What did I hear? 
Ah, okay. So I'm trying to figure out what happened because that should have shown up right away, but it didn't. No, 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 no. The other way around. If you're doing a C major scale, then you wouldn't have F sharps. So you'd turn them into F naturals, exactly. But, and that's why I was originally going to go, and I, and I set them all up for F naturals. But then it just sounded really, really odd, and I decided, okay, forget this. Since I'm starting on a G, then I will turn it into a G major scale and have to go around turning all the F naturals into F sharps. So, yeah. It was a bit laggy, which is odd, because I'm posting that one locally. I wish I was up to, to date on that stuff. Sometimes it's interesting to listen to others. They're just so rusty. Yeah, so we've got... Um, strangely enough, it says there's 24 different... Uh, well, 25 different options for a note block before it wraps around again. But I would swear there's one extra. At least it felt like it when I was doing it. On the other hand, I got the appropriate one. So, yeah, I ended up needing... I think I ended up with 28 note blocks in that um, setup by the time I was done. And the top and the bottom are a villager going, her, or the, the wandering trader doing his thing. But uh, it didn't help. <laughs> so, yeah, I had to go around and, and get them all right because I was trying to to just go with the C major scale because it's pretty simple, but because it doesn't start on C, my brain wants to go, okay, it's a different scale, and then it just sounded really wrong. But who won? That's a good question. That's the weirdest stall out I've seen in a long time. Action cues, what happened there? Fight message? I got the fight message. Ending actions. That's really weird. I'm looking at my action history queue just to see what happened. I see the start fight come through, <clears throat> which is a different queue than the message itself. Well, actually, the start is the same queue as the message itself, but then see the fights come through. I don't see any pending actions. Let's see, is there anyone jammed out or turned off? No. Weird. Yeah, I don't have any pending actions. Hmm. Let's try that one more time. I can I can trigger it, so let's do it again. Okay, cloaked elf picture would have been. James Curry is what it says last. So either either he's lurking, which would be weird because it would be middle of the night for them. Yeah, I don't think it's James. So it didn't update on the other end, it just disappeared. Because it should have updated who, um, who it was. Sixty seconds. So we've got who came in here? Ah, Max with the flip flop, sure. Well now it's lights coming to an end. Okay, let's see what we've got. It's gonna fail or is it succeeding? Huh. All right. Fox with the donut. Rigged. Definitely rigged. I think he's trolling me. Totally. Yeah, it's got to be a troll. Rigged again, yes, indeed it is. Okay. Let me back down by one, two, three, four. Yeah. Which design are we now? Oh, straight.
You hacksered my computer and rigged the game. You know, that wouldn't surprise me. I wouldn't be bothered, but that, would, that wouldn't surprise me. So it said you won and it just refused to announce it. That's odd. Well, now you won the second time, so we're good. We're good. So that would mean, theoretically then, I'm just going to take a quick look. If it worked properly, then the rewards should now say... Yep, there it is. Hill, Hill Champion is Fantastic Sherlock Fox. So it just, it just copped out on us. I don't know what happened there. It didn't even trigger the bot or anything. Odd. Yeah, so set fight reward actually didn't even run the last time, but nor did it ever get queued. Weird. I'm, I'm going to try and take the bot with me on the weekend anyways, so that I can go through and work on the uh, list of commands that it has, like an explainer. And it helps to see what's actually set up in the bot to be able to know what it does and what it's supposed to do. All right. So we've got... One, two, three. Nope, nope, not that short. Oh no, you didn't book a seat for the bot. It has to sit on someone's lap. Oswin would be oh so offended, but you can guarantee that he'd be fine. Because far be it from a monk to actually ever get himself into trouble that way. Particularly this one. The actor who played Oswin in, um, I think it was the ITV series, did it with Eric Jacoby, did a great job of making the guy look so ridiculously innocent that you couldn't imagine him doing anything that was not above board. Which is half the reason why um, Cad Cadfile, the main character, uh, uses Os Oswin to do his little runaround tasks and stuff. But, dude, I'm not trying to hit you. Would you please move? Um, as has him doing his runaround tasks and stuff because it's his look of innocence that usually lets him get away with so much. And the thing is, the guy will actually like throw you under the bus if he gets called out. But somehow, I'm doing it because such and such other person told me to do it. It <laughs> makes you really kind of go, dude, you're dumb. Oh, Botter Oswin. Hey, hey, he's a monkey. People say he monkeys around. But he's too busy praying to put anybody down. Wow, I didn't expect I'd even go there. Some people could probably get offended at that. Um, apologies if you do. But... Yeah, that's, that's, once again, I forgot the folk channel. I keep forgetting to put that in. Um, cause I have material to, to, to feed it with. Um, but that's the sort of thing that one would be doing if one was doing a filk song. Is basically taking whatever song you want, within reason, and re-lyricizing the necessary parts. Like one, two, oops, wrong one. Uh, re-lyricizing re the, the... Is that a word? Probably isn't even a word. Um, the necessary parts so that the lyrics fit your favorite fandom. So it's supposed to be a... I guess the idea was a folk song to your favorite fandom, um, except due to a typo in a, in a long-forgotten uh, conference, like a convention program, it became Filk, F-I-L-K, and then it became Filking... Thankfully, the uh, closed captions got that correct. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was... So that's the kind of thing we do. And I've got a few bits and bobs I can feed the, the bot channel... Or sorry, the Filk channel with. So maybe it's something else I can play with on the weekend. Or on the airplane or something. The thing about it is we are eight hours behind here compared to uh, the UK right now. Even, even counting for their summertime. I should say eight hours, sorry. Let me correct that. Seven hours? Seven hours behind? But it's going to be approximately an eight-hour flight, more or less. And on the one hand, I think I'm going to sleep half decently on the plane, simply because um, my brain's been wired enough that I, I know I didn't sleep well last night. Um, 
and worried about a bunch of different stuff related to the trip and and streaming and otherwise so um but on the other hand i also am sort of wired going the opposite direction in being wired now makes me less likely to sleep on the plane because i'll be doing other things or wanting to do other things yet i don't know because fantastic Sherlock fox can vouch i'll fall asleep in a moving vehicle of any sort just about anywhere anytime especially with warm enough i wish i had room in our luggage for a blanket um it's not that i'm actually cold per se it's that um in the height of summer and all that it's that uh on airplanes i don't do well with the breeze on me. It's just not one of my strengths. A rocking chair. Yes. There is a particular glider rocker in our house with footstool that we bought. I don't know how we managed to get it on sale. But we got it on sale when um, my our oldest son, who's now 12, oldest son, sorry, our son, who's now 12, um, was on the way. And... Weirdly enough, I don't know what it is, but I get in that thing and I can just fall asleep like crazy. I'll be trying to watch a YouTube video with the kids. It'll be something exciting, like what, um, fighting the evil robots in Scrap Mechanic. And I will just doze off completely. On the other hand, at least I'm a little, let's say, uh, polite, I guess, compared to, to how my father would handle that. His response is, oh yeah, we have to watch this episode. We haven't seen this one before. No, we watched it. You were just asleep. No, really, we haven't watched it. We really need to watch it. No, Dad, we've seen this one already. Plenty of times. And you fall asleep every single stinking time. So, yeah. I have become that person, and I don't have to be old for it. Though, I mean, I probably am that, too. Let's see. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Oh, this one's gonna be... Ooh. Then we have to make quite a drastic direction change that way, which just means how I count the twos and threes has to bend. I, and on the map, it looks like I've got a really weird section in the middle because it suddenly straightened out and then it went kawonky again. I had originally thought about going all the way down to the edge of the, where you see the tree line, but that didn't seem to fit for what the story was, so I was only doing that on this far side. All right. Right, yeah. Now that I've said that, I've got something about the way I got just said that just now. Unfortunately, has stuck um, an old sketch from Bill Cosby in my head. So, if anybody is remotely tolerant of Bill Cosby's humor anymore, um, the one I'm I'm liking is one where he pretends to be Noah. From Noah and the Ark, and he's working on it, doing some stuff, in, or doing some work, I suppose. I'm not sure what he's up to initially, but the voice of God, which is also played by him, but the way he says it, they echo the microphone and stuff, and he's getting told by Noah to build an ark and how big it's going to be, and he's got silly lines where it's going to be so many cubits long and so many cubits wide, and he goes, right. Then he falls with, what's a cubit? And that gets stuck in my head. But just the way he says, right. And it just repeats over and over. Ah Rocking chairs are secret zones with tryptophan injection in it. I had a chair like that some years ago. Yeah, we sh you know, if that really was the case, we should probably stop allowing seniors to sit in chairs. Maybe that always explains why, you know, our stereotype grandmas and grandpas are all asleep in the in the armchairs. I find it interesting though, this particular one um, has become my purview, such that Fantastic Sherlock Fox, I've said on multiple occasions, particularly when he's got a sore shoulder or a sore back or something, why don't you sit in the one that's got a little bit more support? And he, he says no every single time. Which is fine. I'm okay with that. You know, no concerns, but it's just, it's amusing because I never thought I'd be one of those people who has my chair or my spot. But even the kids generally won't sit in the chair. Um, although I will admit I probably scared them off of it a little while because, or not because, 
uh, scare them off a bit by um, asking them not to break it. <laughs> not quite sure what happened, but one spot wore out, and Fantastic Shock Fox has got it mended, but it's a bit of a precarious mend. Weird. I don't know what it is these days, but on both this server and on my solo world, I somehow this week thought that the sun going down was on the opposite side. But it feels like east and west got flipped. But I mean, I do know that's north in here, so... Whatever. When when the kids were young, they, um, and I'd use this rocker, they'd come and sit on the on the little uh, glider footstool that comes with it, and they would just rock it back and forth because they got a kick out of the fact that it rocked everybody. But we've had to put a piece of um, pipe insulation or pool, or pool noodle on the back of the chair just so it doesn't mar make marks on the walls. Twitch is being odd, mostly working on my laptop, but I'm having issues with some data not populating. On the Google TV it keeps failing and saying the stream doesn't exist. That's odd. If the issue persists, please do let me know and we'll have to take a, a brief break um, to do a network reboot. The reason I say that is A, we've been doing a lot of poking around at home stuff, which we may have bunged up the network. It's unlikely, but it's possible. But um, I would say it's just Twitch, except that we saw that weird behavior where I, my, uh, the system wasn't giving enough feedback off the Twitch network to be able to properly run the Champion of the Hill. Hello there. Hello there. Welcome on in, DC. Welcome, welcome. I don't think we've seen you in here for a while. Uh, this wall is huge, so we have a lot to do. Um, you guys may have seen the scale of the castle, and each of these little red dots, that's a, I mean, that's a wool block for reference. So we've got a wall that comes way down around the south. It's going to wrap around the bottom side, which you may not be able to see the gray dots. Um, but it wraps around the bottom, and then it comes right back up the west side and wraps back into the castle. Then off the west side, we're actually gonna cut through the trees and connect up to this other little village, which um, on the sketch map I'm using as a reference, they actually call this place Frankwell. I didn't build it. I got here, I got lucky that a village spawned. So I figured, okay, well, we'll use it. Sure, why not? Twitch, your favorites keep disappearing, not on your side, yeah. So I don't know if you were here for the fact that our um, Champion of the Hill failed out miserably. Uh, looks like it was still rigged for Fox either way, but uh, definitely was not working the way we expected. Hmm, what do I want to do here? I'm trying to figure out how did I change turn corners before? I must have to fly back and see. Oh, and it's raining. Raining. So I don't think singing snippets from from musical Greece would be all that helpful at this point in time. Not to mention debatable as whether or not it's family friendly. Okay, so I just started going threes. I have to try and start counting my threes in a different direction is all. Okay, I think I can handle that. And so after getting my, uh, for lack of a better term, my knickers in a knot yesterday over the, uh, snapshot material I just decided today. Although I have things that I could be doing with villagers, I didn't want anything to do with them. So I just stayed away from that and dug into another project. What do we have here? Nothing I think anybody needs. Uh, you can go. And you can go. Actually interesting and one of the things I'm surprised that's never been added to the game is um, any caring from the wandering trader when you go and kill his llamas. He just kind of hangs out there, doesn't seem to care. And the reason I think that's kind of amusing is because, um, oh actually let's do it this way. One, two, three, and then we'll go this direction as well. Nope, two on that one. Um, I half expected it to be something along the lines of like, if you kill his llamas and then go and trade with him, his prices would go up. Like that somehow would make sense to me, but it isn't the case. So, you know, they do their own thing.
I'm backed up. Woo! Oh, let's see. Max says, oh, hey, it's lunchtime. Have a great stream. I'm off for hot ham and cheese subs on homemade rice. Oh, it's sub buns with my buddy. Yum. Totally yummo. What is it we say? Get me in there. Actually, my middle doesn't need it, but that would taste fantastic. Okay, one, two. Let's put the stairs on, see if that helps. not going to work. I'm going to need to count it differently. We'll take this one around the corner. That should help. One, two, three. I can't seem to count today. There we go. So I'm curious to know, it's Thursday. Um, a lot of people start sliding, well, have been sliding down to toward the weekend since yesterday. I'm curious to know if anybody's got any big plans, small plans, any plans at all. Just wondering what all our fine friends are up to. Because you guys have heard a million times where I'm headed. So let's see if we can share the interest, I guess, and see what everybody else is up to. We've got... Um, I have actually no idea what we're doing once we land in Ireland. Apparently, my father-in-law has that sorted out, and where he doesn't, I'm leaving it to Fantastic Sherlock Box to, to figure out. Because this is his extended family, so more or less his forte. I shouldn't say forte, but his uh, connections and all. And what do we got? Okay, one, two, bricks. That's a really janky corner turn. How does it look on the map? Can't tell yet, okay. Which is probably good news. Is it thundering somewhere? No, it's not, okay. Great. So, let's try a new geek out. And that question of the day needs to go. Uh -huh. Hmm. That's not good. We lost one of our mods. Unfortunately, their connection just bit the biscuit. So, uh, yeah, definitely time to act up if, if that's your thing. One. So you may lose me, and if that happens, do uh, just hang on and I'll be back as quick as possible. Unless it's close to noon. If it's close to the top of the hour, I may just call it. But I'll let you guys know in chat one way or the other. If the connection goes down entirely, um, then we could have a challenge. But hoping, hoping, crossing our fingers and toes and everything else that it doesn't go that way. This one? Maybe? And then we can go down one. So now I've got one, two, three, four, three, five. All right, plus one is six. Okay, good. Feels weird turning a corner as well as coming down. One, two, three, four. Nope, that's the wrong one. Using this in one, two. Three, four, five, six. I guess we do come down one. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna have to skip this particular song. It sounds to me a little bit like a zombie in the background. I don't know why. There we go. So we're, music today is courtesy of the Stream Tunes service, uh, which is sort of a Canadian, Canadian answer to Stream Beats, the Harris Heller system. And, uh, Hey, I'll take free. <laughs> but also when they have issues with copyright uh, comments on YouTube videos, um, usually there's enough information that we can actually go ahead and mute just the sound clip. If not, um, what is actually quite easy to do is on the StreamTunes website, I just log in there, say, look, I got a copyright notice. And they go, oh, yeah, okay. Here's your, you know, here's your email address, here's the website. And they just go and release the claim, which is really, really nice. Huh. 
So about 20 minutes ago, Twitch complaints went through the roof. So something is definitely sick on the Twitch side. We seem to be holding steady at the moment, so I'm not going to look a gift horse in the mouth at the moment. Let's see what did I get. Straight, one, two, okay. Bricks. One, two. Three. So this um, DC asked about the length of the wall, which is kind of ridiculous, but I'm going to actually be doing it twice. So one of the things I hope to do is take a look at, at um, a chunk of the wall, so a portion of what I've got done, and put the last four blocks on now that I'm kind of happy with it. Um, I'm not happy with the way it connects to the castle, but I can always change that after. I may take a straight section somewhere in the middle and just start putting the next layer on this. So there'll be four more, four more blocks above this. Why I have four more blocks above this? I'm not particularly sure why I decided that, but I went with it and liked the way it looked with all 10. I don't usually build something on that sort of scale. So it was a bit refreshing for me to, to uh, play around with things at that size. And I'm late. There we go. I keep forgetting that Down Detector exists. It's a nice website. When it comes to Twitch, though, we could probably call it Jank Detector. Okay. And I play slow. I... Oh well, whatever. Whatever. It is, it is what it is. One. Two. Three. Yeah, it should be good. And then one more out, maybe. Let's see if this angle looks okay. If no, 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 no. Eek Out has changed two shows produced by Sid and Marty Croft. I don't even know who those guys are. <laughs> I think we might have to Google that one. Just I don't even know who those people are to know what they produced. Yeah, let's, let's skip that one just because I don't even know who those guys are. There we go. Four actors who have played dancers. Okay. Actors. Now, normally they mean guys when they say that that is actors as opposed to actresses. Just the way the um, questions have been worded thus far. Um, that said, if we're going to exceed uh, four, then or if we're trying to exceed four, then I can always add the actresses as well. Because, I mean, in the Chicago alone, we had um, Renee Zellweger and... Oh, jeez. I can see your face, and I just can't see the name. Uh, Catherine Zeta-Jones. Both played, played dancers. But I'm not sure that's quite what they mean. This one, this one. Let's go with a short one. Yeah, because that wall was four sections, so I want to try and rebend it down this way. What else have we got? And I'm just noticing, okay, today's horrible location question of the day. When you were a young kid, what did you want to be when you grew up? I wanted to be all kinds of things. I wanted to be an astronaut. I mean, who doesn't? Um, I wanted to be, actually, I wanted to be an entomologist. We've been over that one, so I'll just say that and leave it be. Hey, Tis for Truth, how are Hello. you doing? One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Um, what else? There's a lot of things, I guess, people wanted, wanted to be. I'd have to look and see, actually. I have a record of that. Um, my mom was one of the ones who kept a little book of what her kids were doing. It was just one of those, uh... It's like a pocketed piece of, uh, of coil stuff where she would keep my report cards. So, so actually I have most of them uh, from grade school years. And uh, it also would have questions like, who are your best friends? And put a picture of your classmates here and all that kind of jazz. And uh, so I think it had that. I wanted, okay, I briefly wanted to be a vet. Yep. 
Ooh, Jennifer Beals and Patrick Swayze. You're right. That was from Flashdance, I think. Yeah, I wanted to be, I did want to be a veterinarian for sure. Now here's, here's my follow-up question to that one. If, if one wanted to be something and you didn't end up actually becoming that as an adult, do you recall what it was that stopped you? Um, I definitely wanted to be an entomologist. We've talked about the fact that, that, uh, having to work with spiders stopped me, but I'm kind of curious what, what would have pulled off or ceased the dream for somebody else. One, two, three. Aubrey said, I don't know what I wanted to be. Still don't really. Oh yeah, I guess that's a good one. It is, uh, life is full of, of roads and the road to success can, or road to being what you want to be, doesn't really end until you look back on it and, and ask yourself, did I get to be what I wanted to be? Because sometimes we don't even know what we want to be until we're, until we're there. Um, probably keep going forward, right? Right. So this one's wrong, back here. Someone told me that I'd have to put perfectly good animals down because of bad owners. And I knew I'd struggle with that. Yeah. I'm assuming you mean things like, um, either neg neglect or cruelty. Or sometimes people not necessarily getting their pet spayed or neutered and being unwilling to deal with the consequences of that decision. That's, that's one that I used to, used to struggle with as a concept. When I was young, I wanted to volunteer with, with like a pet shelter, but the other one that actually got me though, one of the things I always thought was weird was, um, I understand that vets have to charge for their services. No bones about that. No problem. But it seemed weird. We had to pay like 20 bucks, to get a hamster put down. <laughs> now, why, the other question was why my parents paid it. That's another one. I mean, knowing, knowing what I know, actually, I do know why they paid it. It's because, um, you know, I was freaking out and they couldn't just let the hamster kick the bucket in the house. Uh, that would not have gone over very well. But uh, yeah, we've, I mean, considering the sheer number of rodents we've had over the years, we've had a lot of uh, euthanasia vet bills. Bob that I don't even think I knew what a project manager was when I was young. I just, just the path I ended up through a series of choices and circumstances. You know, sometimes I think that that would be the case. If somebody asked a kid what a project manager is or does, what do you think they'd say? Right? It's kind of like the whole take your dad to work day sort of question. Because um, sometimes, a pro sometimes kids just don't know what the title is or the thing they want to be. One, two, three, four, five. So we may say, you know, I didn't know I wanted to be a project manager. Well, yeah, but there's probably more to it than that in that um, um, maybe you wanted to do what a project manager does and just didn't know to call it that. I also, um, without throwing shock, under the bus too much. Oops, one, two, three, four, five. Um, I also suspect that your falling into it may have had something to do with your other interests and hobbies and, and thereby developing it, you know, magazines and stuff and thereby developing an interest in um, the cybersecurity field just by nature of enjoying your other hobbies and realizing somewhere somebody's going to make it pay. Um, also, I would suspect it, that there's something to be said for cybersecurity individuals who have OCD. <laughs> because um, that's sort of a feature of the cybersecurity individuals I've known. One, two, three, four. Oops. Shouldn't have come down. 
But Bob said, I really wanted to be a scientist if I think about it. Inspired by Quincy. Ooh, Quincy. Really? Cool. To me, that sounds sort of like somebody saying, um, I've been inspired by bones to be a, a forensic whatever. Actually, when I was in high school, um, I thought I wanted to be an environmental biologist. That's actually what I went into university for initially, was um, I was determined that I was going to help help a team, because I recognize you don't do these things on your own, but help a team under some company or other um, develop plastics that were biodegradable. That was my thing. I was all excited about that. Um, what stopped me on that one was calculus. Calculus is not my friend. Okay. I'm trying to get to that weird little dot over there. And while I'm kind of pointed in the right direction, on the, on the mini-map you can sort of see we're kind of pointed in the right direction, there's a little bit more stuff in here than I'd planned, so I guess we have to pause for some terraforming. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine a few of them a few of them might be inspired by James Harriet. On the other hand, um, they did a good job with the British television series, enough that I don't think that there are all that many veterinarians that wanted to do that after having seen what in, what is involved. I mean, these days I'd be mean, that's just me, and uh, ask any aspiring or aspiring youth um, to put up with watching city slickers. Look, Ma, I made a cow! Because that was quite gross. And also the reality is that uh, a lot of people have to start out as the country vet. It's not an easy, easy win. I will, I will still give our local vet credit for, um, oh geez, um, for being willing to euthanize our dog during COVID. That was rough, very, very rough. Um, I know it rocked Fantastic Sherlock Fox a fair bit, just trying to get all that organized and, and then there's the emotional side of it and whatever, because he was the, by that point, he was the major um, caregiver for the dog just because... Well, part of it was the dog needed to walk, and Fantastic Chalk Fox is a pacer who just can't sit still, so the two go together quite nicely. Um, but also that in his later years, this dog was like 60 pounds, 50 to 60 pounds, and we, there was, I could only lift him so much. Which uh, was problematic, because, um, oh shoot, I guess I need some more dirt. Um, it was problematic because um, I couldn't really take him. And he need, eventually need to be taken outside and all that kind of stuff. And so um, I was really glad that when it came finally time to say goodbye to the dog, that uh, that Fantastic Shot Fox was able to do the lift. So the, I don't recall whether or not the vet um, said they would come do a house call, though I suspect if we'd asked nicely, this particular one might have, just because she was, you know, everybody's best buddy type of vet. We had a, we, <laughs> when we had um, our daughter, which I thought was kind of funny because we had the dog at the time. Um, when, I, when we had our daughter, the dog had gone and, I don't know, broke a claw or something. And we had to, to it was bleeding all over the place and whatever. And we had to get the dog to the vet. Well, the, the vet very kindly offered to keep the dog overnight so that we could deal with having a brand new baby in the house for 24 hours before we had to go get the dog again. Uh, let's see, where are we here? Huh. I don't know what the PCI, DSS, or ISA stuff is, but I'm glad you guys understand it. I know what PCI cards are, so I get that part. That's to do with um, payment systems, as I understand it. But Tiz says, there was a time when we couldn't afford the vet when I was a kid, so I was the vet. Really wish we had Google back then. My education was a lot of trial and error and whatever books the small local library had. Oh, hey, maybe you'd be a great research vet. Uh, yeah, our fantastic Chuck Fox says our local vet is a good vet, and she was kind enough to break COVID rules and let me be in the clinic when it was time. 
So you can be with the dog when he passed. Yeah, that's rough. And lots of heart. And sorry to hear that, Tiz. That would be so hard. Twitch being twitchy can't access emotes. I understand. I totally understand. Well, you know, we're old school enough here that if that if you want emotes bad enough, Ask Yard is still a thing. Our kids are amused by Ask Yard, actually. And my daughter loves her, her uh, little stickers that you can use in, in addition to emotes on her iPhone uh, or her iPad. And uh, so she asked me that not too long ago, was like, why would you bother typing things? Why would you bother typing in? Oh, shoot. One, two, this one's wrong. Um, why bother typing things if you just use an emote for it? So that was an interesting explanation. Just saying, well, you know, there are some things that I may be old for doing, but I just don't want to give up on. Sometimes the effort going in, to me, makes it feel like the emote is worth more. But I know it sounds silly, but if I'm going to type a you know, greater than sign with a three, or no, less than, I think. But anyways, if I'm going to type a less than sign with a three on it, then that, to me that sometimes feels like it has more effort put into it, and thereby the emotion is more useful. It's like, what? She didn't get it. And maybe I'm un unique in that style, um, in that I like to think about how much effort goes into it. Because if you actually had to manually type out, or even copy-paste to ASCII art, it took effort. And it's sort of... Yeah, to me it really did feel like it actually had more value. Okay, what I'm trying to do is get somewhat level. Somewhat. Not perfectly level, but just so I don't have to worry about dipping all the way down, then all the way back up. Because if one was doing that in reality, um, although this side is difficult to attack because it's got such a weird set of, of ter terrain, um, it would still, the dip would, is, uh, what do you call it, engineering difficult, which would mean then that it would be a, a wonderful target for uh, enemies to try and go after because particularly back in the medieval period, it would have taken a lot more um, effort, I guess, to build. And so therefore the enemies would be able to figure out that there is a greater likelihood, pure probability, um, that you're going to have made an, an error in such a way that you've got a weak spot or a weak point. Fox says, our daughter was born when I got home from the hospital, thankfully after sleeping. Then we woke up to blood everywhere. Yeah, the dog had broke a claw. Uh, he took him to the vet to have his toe, <laughs> his toe amputated, which was interesting. And then went to the hospital to see me and our daughter. Um, I got there early, and so he parked in the parkade near the emergency entrance. That's just the, where the parkade was. And he's cleaning dog blood out of the back of the minivan without realizing how bad that looked, being in the hospital parkade. Yeah. I was really glad I wasn't there because I'm not sure what I would have said to the optics of that. But I, do, I vaguely remember this, this notion of, you did what? But just more confusion than anything else. It was... It was stressful. I mean, it would have taken one phone call to the vet to find out that it was true. Like, that the story was true. But... Yeah, that, that would have looked really weird. I mean, on the other hand, though, there's times that I'm surprised we haven't had to do a bio cleanup because of my daughter's nosebleeds. So, um, so I guess it wouldn't have been all that bad. There's probably plenty of people who've had to clean out their car because of nosebleeds. Or something similar. Sim similarly, generally innocuous. Okay. Now, can I get over there from here? Then I have to bend up going that direction, so I might as well... Um, uh, nuts. This is going to take some more filler till I'm happy down there, but... Get the wall through first. It's going to be more like a trap for things rather than... Pardon me, a pleasant place to live. Yeah, the dog came out okay. Yeah, your dog should not be nearly 19 when he's a cro when he's a hound 57. It doesn't do well. All right.
right. We knew he was Beagle, and oh my goodness, was he smart as well. So it was it was an interesting interesting series of years. Um, am I coming down again? Yes. Why not? I come down there, and I don't have to go back later. Maybe? Maybe? Uh, we can't decide. Can't decide. 20 minutes left, though, for those of you that are counting. That was this one, yeah. One, two... come down any further. Hmm. One of the, one of the hallmarks of having Delenn in the area is that you will just about always see a one block edge when you go around things. It just really bothers me. I don't know why. I wish I knew. But not to have like a <clears throat> a lip around things. So like this sort of corner. You'll almost always see me add the extra. <clears throat> Goodness gracious. Everybody needs a hydrate. Two, four, six, eight! Everybody hydrate! Alright, that's better. Whoa. There's a lot of little uh Redeems that I've missed. Accepting. Stuff was 17 hours ago. Gotta figure out that one. Alright. Ah, yes, thank you, Fantastic Shout Fox. I realized as I clicked it that I had not thanked you directly for the extra shout out for Tiz. Um, and it just reminds me I've got to get Tiz on the. Tiz and probably Scrublord on the uh, please thank your mods list. One, two, three, so one, two, two, one more. All right, so we're, we're slowly inching our way around. I won't be doing all of this on stream. That's part of why I'm taking, I made sure last night I got access to this one from, um, from Fantastic Shock Box's Microsoft Surface. So hopefully through, at least one or two stints of this next two and a half weeks in the evening when we're sort of unwinding, that I'll be able to get it on and do a little bit more wall work. Because this is one of those projects, it's like, I wouldn't exactly say it's a never ending story, but it's definitely the, the never ending wall work. And it's not, not something that we're gonna make a movie about. And hindsight, yeah, it does. Um, hindsight 2020, when I uh, started this wall, I should have probably started, you know, clicking restream or something on these, or um, remembering to actually keep all the wall work vods with uh, an ability to put together time lapse. But honestly, by the time this wall is done, I think I'll be about as done with it as you guys are. There we go. One. Oops, is that? I can start pulling back a little bit. Oh god. Okay, come here. You, come this way. I know there's a bunch of you this way. Come on. Hey, dummy, come here. Come on. You're now out of the way, right? Good. Stay. One, one, two, and forward. Do I need to go forward? No. That's okay. Why did I do that? That makes no sense. Anything. 
Um, where are we here? More smooth than we have the tip. Yeah, it does. It does look a little smoother when I do that. One of the things I miss about being able to use, um, what do you call it? A, like a light Matica or something else like that, is I don't have to worry about figuring it out as I go. You can actually rock it through a little bit more, even at the speed I put things in. Ah, Poodle Hello. Pirate dropped. Hello. So I see, by the way, Poodle Pirate, have you managed to find the, um, all the stuff you needed that you were asking me about recently? With regards to things like the drop, have you managed to sort out or find the website for that sort of stuff? One, two... Ah, you had a doozy we can have not tried. That's okay. No problem. No problem at all. I did need to come down one block. Two blocks? Okay. I'll come down one there, which is too far at the top. One, two, three. We just won't tell anybody that it's this short, right? Because all we need is invaders. Zen's there, crazy French. With me and my bad accent, duh. All right. I'm going to force it to be two blocks wide before we come down another one. Oops. Just keep looking. You know, I've got free cam. I really should just set the free cam spot. That would make, you know, blend plenty of sense. Okay, so one, two, oops, three. Two. Did I come forward? No, I did not. Yeah. It's like my bad friend accent is almost as silly as, uh, well, not even as good remotely, but um, using that is almost as silly as when you watch like Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Not everybody's into that, so I, I understand that clearly. Um, but they talk about, about, wait, no, we've already got one. Yeah, we're French, you see. Why else would you think we have this silly accent? And other sorts of things which really quickly proceed into not exactly family friendly. Because they start insulting the, the knights quite heavily. Two, three. Yay, Jay's online! Woohoo! One, two, three, four, five. Okay. I haven't seen Jay online in like a while, I guess. She's been a busy, busy person. Do I want to? I'm just. Let's try and move this one more forward. Yeah, I, I hope your week gets better from here. I know that's a, not a fair thing to say. Um, since I mean, I'm getting out of dodge and all that. One, two, three, four, five. Um, but I really do hope that your week gets better. Sounds like, on the whole, there's actually been quite a lot of people that have had a fairly rough week this week. Everything from strange happenings through to um, just health issues. It's like Karma doesn't like people today. One, two, let's start with that one. Two, three. But the other side doesn't know it won't hurt him, right? I'm sorry that Jay's having to try again to find a spot to live. Is it their outside trim? But we're not... Uh, we don't actually do trim on the Java server. Um, we just don't have a need for a big... or a need to size down the file the same way. But also the trim that um, 
Zerk was telling me about that they would be doing actually doesn't have a sort of a distance zone on it. It's more of um, they, they they've got the ability to cut spaces out based on when how frequently they've been visited. So, for example, if um, one, two, three, four, there we go. So, for example, if someone had just traveled through, passing from point A to point B, then we can trim the stuff in between. And that's one of the nice parts about not having everybody live close together, is that unless you're traversing that in the overworld a lot, um, we can trim that out, which means that people don't have to worry about having... I do one, two, three, sure. Um, they don't have to worry about not having, say, 1.20 stuff in between, because if, when we actually at some point get around to a trim, um, then they'll just be clipping out block or clipping out areas that have already been traversed through, but where people didn't stick around. And then we can add extra ones too, uh, intentionally if need be. So stuff like uh, what, what appears to end up being a mining zone or something like that can be if forcefully included in that list. One, two, three. Oh, we're almost there. One, two, and forward. I've got blocks in the wrong spaces. Oops. They made a boo-boo. That's okay. Mistakes happen. Alrighty, so we are five minutes out. Um, I know we often finish on a high note, so just trying to keep things positive. But there, there will be... So no, no streams from me next week at all. And no streams from me the week after. But I should be back the following one, so we're looking at the 22nd, I believe, is when I'll be back streaming again. Provided nothing goes sideways while we're out of country, which I don't expect to have any concerns in that respect. Uh, what was I here for? These. And... Over there. Resetting for updates. Well, we'll hope that everything stays stable for people because in the meantime, Twitch is being twitchy and then some. One, two. So I, as I've said before, I really, really, really want to get this section going because um, what I, one of the things I want to do with it is to actually like, have a village inside the wall. Oh, that's not right. Um, have a village inside the wall such that I can um, start building houses. Houses and buildings and pubs and pubs and inns and ale houses and yeah, all that stuff. If you're ever looking for a history one that's kind of interesting in the modern sense, um, check out for YouTube channels, check out um, Modern History. It's a guy from the tech sector. I don't can't remember what he does, but fairly affluent anyways. And he um, spends his time doing historical reenactments and researching into history. Oops. And re reenacting history. And recently he just put up a video about the difference between an inn, a tavern, and an alehouse. So that's kind of a fun one to take a, a boo at. One. Matched and not matched. Three, one, two, three. There we go. So we have, um, yeah, so I'm not up for the next two weeks, but the stream after that, and I'm, this is a test. It may not be accurate. I just want to see if the next stream command actually works. The data of this one. Nope, that's way wrong. So ignore, <laughs> ignore. Nope. Wrong. It's funny, because I did actually tell um, 
both tell Twitch that I've got going on vacation mode and manually cancel all the streams for next week, so I don't know what it's got going on. We'll have to see where its brain went while we're away and figure out what's happening when we come back. Twitch she be twitchy. Do you, do you have an intention to come off of holiday mode at some point, Poodle? Just curious more than anything else. Also, I would love to be able to be in people's streams to mod while I'm away, but that would that would be a bit more family time wasted, so... Not wasted, sorry. It's never wasting when I'm watching someone's stream, but a bit more family time not spent with family. Let's put it that way. It's probably smarter. VOD it just means I have VODs for the airplane, right? System. There we go. Uh -huh. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. Got it. Maybe. Hello, pig. One, two. Why am I... One having trouble reaching this. I have no clue. Anyway, so thanks for, for the fun, everybody. Um, we do have, yep, we do have a few up. I think I'm going to try and hit up Jade. We haven't seen Shro in a while, but Shro has been streaming quite short lately. So I'm not sure. I'll take a look and see which one seems likely to stay longer. It's not clear at the moment, so give me a quick second to slip over here and see who's live that Shro's probably the best bet. Or sorry, I said Shro. Shro or Jade are probably the best bet. Because some of the other ones I follow are um, gathering things slower than I am. Hmm. That's odd. That's quite odd. So I'm just taking a look to see um, yeah, Twitch is being really, really weird. So, Fantastic Shock Fox had mentioned, it sounded like we had both options. Let's try to figure out who's been up longer, but it sounds like what he recorded and what I'm seeing are actually reversed. So I think we're going to go see um, Jade. She's pushing two hours, and um, so she may cut and run soon. But the thing is, Shrove, our other option, has been up for three hours. So I don't think that's a great one. Uh, the only other one I saw here that would be any good at the moment would be to head over to JD White. But their gathering and his his gather is even less exciting than mine. So that's saying something. Um, I like him. I really do. But I think it's just he's very quiet at times. Okay. Uh, and that was not the world's best thing to say about anybody, and I do apologize in advance, because, yeah, that was just rude on my part. All right. Let me just throw in one more row so I can figure out where I'm at at a good spot. And then we are off to yeah, off to the races. One, two, three. And then oh, that one's going to jut. There. Okay. I have a ledge and manners. Not. Manners are missing. So we've got more wall. And this is why I don't play looking backwards. So we've got more of the wall done this time. And we're headed on over to the next section. Big thank you to everybody for dropping by. Um, let's get a raid started, and then I will say the individual thanks. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo, where was I going again? Maribel. Oh, nope. Yeah, Maribel. Mischief managed. All right. Thanks, everybody, for coming by. I really do appreciate that. Uh, we're going to have our special thanks today to Max Money for dropping the raid and bringing his friends along. I really appreciate that a lot. Looks like my bot is being weird because it's still showing the cheers and sub gifts from yesterday, even though I thought I had reset that. So obviously a problem on my end as well. Um, also, thank you very much to Fantastic Charlotte Fox for being our um, some of our clue spenders today. And we got a few extra people chatting, so I want to say special thanks as well to Tis for Truth and Dadcraft73 for dropping in. Um, hope you guys both enjoyed yourself, as well as, um, once again, Max, hope you were enjoying yourself. 
and Bob as well. And I can think about that. Um, if there's any I didn't mention, I do apologize. As you can see, my list is a little bit janky. But also, I want to say thank you very much for coming by and sitting in and hanging out with, with us today. You definitely make my day when you guys hang out. And I'm glad that we can share this time together. Well, it sounds like Mr. Rogers. Anyway, have yourselves a great weekend. Feel free to grab any emotes necessary. Drop any feedback, positive, negative, or otherwise, in the Discord. And um, I will be seeing you soon. Have yourselves a great couple of weeks. Bye-bye for now.